Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back for your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Zenfin Network, aka XDC. So let's just dive in and let's start off with this tweet here from Watcher Guru. So we do see fun fact, only 4.5% of the entire global population is invested into cryptocurrency. Now, what I find extremely crazy about these statistics is this is just like the general crypto market. Imagine how many individuals are actually invested into the utility tokens. I would love to see how many individuals are actually invested into XDC because XDC has been falling. You know, I, I think the last time that I looked at the, uh, the price chart for XDC, it was trading at like two and a half cents or something like that. I think at the current time that I'm recording this, it's slightly under two and a half cents. We've been watching the price action for a while on XTC. It recently made in the the year span a new all-time low at about like two cents. And the craziest thing about that is that we have been focused on the like the two cent range going all the way back to I think it was like February of twenty uh twenty twenty one, that demand range. And I said if we lose that that we would be retesting about like one cent. And yes, that's possible. But the reason why I say that is because I think that XDC even right now is one of the most overlooked assets in the space. And if we go any lower, I mean, it's going to be an incredible, incredible long-term opportunity. I mean, like from one cent, one and a half cent, or even two cents, you're looking at like long term at least a 50x opportunity investment wise so that's incredible to me and what's crazy is that when we look at the statistics around blockchain uh martin um Heisboek posted this document over on twitter and it it breaks down the market outlook um as well as the top spenders and what's crazy about this is that you can see the global blockchain spend CAGR by 2024, 46.40%. North America's contribution to the global growth of blockchain market, 46%. Growth rate of the blockchain market in 2020, 10.27%. 620.37 million total blockchain transactions as of February 2021. Uh, $1.76 trillion. How much blockchain will uh, boost global GDP by 2030? 39.7 billion dollars projected uh, blockchain market value in 2025 from 3 billion in 2020. 17.9 billion dollars estimated global spend on blockchain solutions by 2024. And look at the top spending uh, the top blockchain spenders worldwide. Banking 29.7%. Countries with the most blockchain spenders. USA 4.2 billion. Western Europe, 2.9 billion. Others, 1.9 billion. Republic of China, 1.4. Japan, 0 0.75 billion. And Middle East and Africa, 0 0.5 billion. It's crazy to me that the banking market is 30% nearly as the top blockchain spenders. This proves to you where the focus on this technology is really coming from. It also proves the point that the, the future banking system, the future banking sector is going to be built around blockchain technology. No one, and I mean no one, is paying attention to this. People need to wake up to what is happening. Because I'm telling you, when we look at what is happening around this sector, around this technology... It is incredible. We do see over here from, again, Martin Heisbowick, um, with the majority of institutional investors interested in tokenization, DLT may represent the next financial frontier. I'm telling you, focus on what is happening. Innovation within the financial and the institutional grade sector specifically is becoming a norm like it, it, it's becoming the norm technology like they want to push towards this the uk i've been talking to you guys about the uk for a while their economic chief wants more investment into cryptocurrency businesses because they know what's going to happen like this is the future 
crypto will play such a pivotal role in the next revolution around payments and finance. And I think that's really going to shock and wake up a ton of individuals into just how large of an opportunity crypto was this year, last year, the year before that. Like, we are so early in this game. And we do see over here from Andrew Carrier, who is the CMO um, with that he's from Quant Network. He, he He's the one uh, that really kind of talks quite a bit around Quant Network, and he's really addressing quite a bit of things around what Quant's doing. But also, we pay attention to what London is doing. And they just recently overtook New York and San Francisco for fintech funding. London provides fintechs with access to one of the world's leading financial centers alongside Europe's largest tech ecosystem. This combination is a recipe for innovation. London wants to be a leader because they see the value proposition here. Being the first, like I even said it in, the, in a video recently around like CBDCs, it's almost like we're seeing a secondary space race where these countries want to be the first to go live with crypto. And this is happening right now. Like, we are seeing a massive push. And a lot of these processes and these use cases and things like that that are being built out on the XDC network, the Zinfin network, in my opinion, will play a vital role in the next evolution of what's happening around central banks, too. Um, if you guys watch my XRP videos, right, what's the biggest thing that we focus on? We talk about gold and the accumulation of it from central bankers. Central banks are hoarding massive amounts of gold. You think that this is a coincidence? Absolutely not. They are hoarding massive amounts of gold because, in my opinion, and we've talked about this many times as well in the past, gold is going to play a vital role in the next evolution of fiat currency, specifically digitized fiat currency. What do I mean by that? Well, we talked about CBDCs being backed by gold issued out on DLTs like the Zinfin network. And yes, I do think that the Zinfin network will also be a, a major DLT within that area of focus as well because of the efficiencies behind it. Very similar to even the XRP Ledger or even, you know, Stellar with XLM. Um, but yeah, we do see tokenization of gold might be the biggest use case in blockchain right now as central banks keep stockpiling gold. And then over here, banks will be able to hold 2% of the reserves in tokenized form. Just recently talked about this. XDC Network is one of the most optimum layer one blockchain infrastructure available for tokenization. Also, its hybrid technology is a huge stepping stone for them. I mean, it really is something special. And then over here, Crypto Airy posted this video. So regulated technology, RegTech, will be massive in 2023 and beyond. At the Bazinga event, uh, John McBee highlights XDC Tech who I hosted this last summer as a complementary and regulated disruptor to trade finance, tokenizing trade invoices using the XDC network. Listen closely to this video. It's about two minutes long. Uh, John McBee, uh, Director of Integration for the XDC Foundation. XDC Foundation, we're stewards of the XDC network. It's a layer one EVM compatible delegated proof of stake network. And we focus on applications and trade finance. So the business model for uh, XTC Tech is to go and use invoice factoring. And so to buy invoices from people looking to export goods who want access to that capital before they're received on, on the importer side, uh, those invoices are then put into different pools and they're tokenized. And their uh, fungible tokens are created against those pools and then people can go and they can buy those. Now those are securities because there's a built-in expected yield. And so the expected yield is up to 5%. These take a long time because moving goods across the world takes a long time. And so retail investors in qualified jurisdictions are able to go uh, to the website and they're able to connect with their wallet using Web3. Uh, and then they're able to purchase these and hold on to them. And as they hold on to these tokens, those tokens represent their interest in, uh, in, in the, the assets that back of the security token. And as those come good and they're paid off by the importer, that yield is then, percentage of that yield is then passed on to these retail investors that hold that asset class. Now, I imagine that moving forward, uh, secondary markets will spring up where people will be able to take those tokens and exchange them for other security tokens. And so this is gonna be a heavily regulated industry, right? Which I think is important. Uh, this is 
like uh, Stefan said, uh, we're disrupting, but it's really a complementary disruption. Right? We're not trying to displace this existing infrastructure. We're trying to take this really old uh, business model, right? Trade finance has been around for centuries and we're trying to make it more efficient and make it more accessible. Uh, and this is just one of the ways that we're trying to do that is through this trade token. Now, there are lots of other ways you can disrupt uh, global trade finance, but this was a uh, first foray. And again, like this is just one of the many areas that they're focused on. Like they even said, like this is one, um, one way to disrupt this uh, massive market. I mean, like we've talked about trade finance so much on this channel, as you guys are probably all aware of if you watch my other XDC content. And yeah, I do believe that, you know, when we look at any other project in this space that is really kind of focused on uh, trade finance, the only major player that I've always found is, well, Zinfin. Um, and I do think that XDC will play a vital role in disrupting this entire asset class, aka trade finance. Um, and I think that this is going to be very, very exciting, especially going forward. And I don't think people are really, you know, realizing the value proposition behind uh, what Zinfin is offering to trade finance. Um, and then over here, we also do see a few of the major things that have been happening around Zinfin. I'm sure that you guys are aware of some of these, but we do see Stasis Eurus now live on the XDC network. Uh, DMCC Authority digitizes gold trading through tokenization of Comtech Official. Uh, gold bullion backed by DMCC's Tradeflow platform. US Plus stablecoin by Fluent DAO integration goes live with the XDC network as well. And a lot of these stablecoins... Don't don't write these stable coins off, um, because what I've said in the past around these stable coins, these are actually incredible opportunities for Zinfin. Why? Well, I've talked about it many times. I do think that when we focus on um, the stable coins, specifically even commercialized stable coins, stable coins around the commercial grade area are disrupting the entire workflow of these companies these massive names in the game we've talked about this even with um with hedera right these stable coins could amount to massive amounts of volume on these networks not only that but these are also huge integrations that are also disrupting well trade finance and it's very exciting to watch this unfold um, especially on the Zinfin network as it is hosting a lot more stable coins and I do suspect that we will see more and more launch out on Zinfin which is always exciting uh, because the more the merrier I think um, there was an interesting quote I forgot who said it but they essentially said that there's going to be a domino effect on a lot of these utility networks and what it's going to be is you're going to have so much value coming from specific players that are domino affecting into other major industries and other major partnerships and it's going to be very exciting to see that blossom into effect. And I, I'm so excited for a lot of these networks because I do see the value proposition behind um, behind those domino effects. It's almost like the network effects of Bitcoin, but on a much, much larger scale. Because again, like this is going to be mass adoption uh, within trade finance. And uh, this is like... When you look at trade finance, you're not disrupting retail sectors. No, you're disrupting the banking sector. This is why when we look over here at the top blockchain spenders, the banks are getting pre prepared. Like it's not retail. Retail six percent, like the lowest percentage on this diagram, and the banks, the banks are ready. They want to utilize this technology, and they want it now. They don't want to utilize this technology later on. No, they want this technology now because they see the value behind it and that that is something very very exciting so with that being said i hope that you guys enjoyed this video if you guys did definitely leave a like subscribe to notifications on if you guys have more free content you guys are more than welcome to follow me on twitter and join the free discord down in the description below as always up to you all have a beautiful day but from that if you guys are on this before this has been nick peace out guys